Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we're taking a look at these two inks. These are the inks for the Chicago Pin Show in 2019, which if you're watching this the day it comes out is probably about a week from now, maybe a little bit less. Uh, so these are coming up soon. You can really only get these at the Chicago Pin Show reliably. Uh, it has been the case that after the show, if there's some left over, they end up in various online shops like Papier Plumes. Sometimes Van Ness gets some, sometimes Anderson Pens. You never know who's going to end up with them if there are extras. Uh, but there are never uh, all that many extras. So if you want one of these, and you're going to see them in this video, uh, maybe uh, get yourself a mule. That is, make a friend who's going to the show and have them send you some inks. Uh, these were given to me by uh, Patrick over at Papier Plume. He gave them to me uh, at the uh, Atlanta Pin Show. It's always a good time to catch up with Patrick. Patrick and, uh, you know, the crew down there are great. Um, so these are the two inks. We're going to take a look at them. It's going to be a fairly quick look, and I'm going to leave some of the stuff out that I generally do for inks because these are hard to get. And so, uh, you know, like chromatography and all that stuff. Like, I'm just going to skip those because, um, you know, they're Papier Plume inks and they're going to be good. So let's take a look. Uh, they, of course, come in these bottles and the price range on these is usually like eight to 10 bucks. This is a one ounce bottle. So 30 mils. Uh, they do these nice, you can see them there, these nice like wax uh, seals in the caps. They must just like make a vat of, uh, of wax and then just dip the caps in and then seal a bunch of them all at once because I think this is cool. I love the wax caps. Here's another one. This is Streetcar Green from their, um, their uh, New Orleans collection. Same kind of deal with the, the wax seal going down there. So anyway, let's take a look at these guys in some pens. And here we go. Uh, on the one hand, you have Lake Michigan's Winter, which is this sort of blue-green guy right here. They did a Lake Michigan Summer, I believe. Yep, that's right. Lake Michigan Summer uh, a couple of years ago, I want to say. And uh, that was a pretty cool ink, too. I'm sure there's a review for it on my channel and my blog, so go check it out there. Uh, but you can't really get your hands on them. That's the nature of limited edition inks. Also, this is not my normal paper. And you'll see there's a little bit of feathering in that sort of thing, which is to be expected when you pour a bunch of ink on a paper that's not really coated. This is Apica paper. Uh, but here it didn't really come through. It's got some interesting... Um, like you can see a little bit of the brown came through, like a little yellowish tinge there, and like a couple of little bits around the edges, uh, maybe a few here too, but not much. So that's pretty impressive. I'm not not used to this paper very much, but I did, of course, put it on some copy paper and that sort of thing. Um, this is Apica 70 GSM, and I put this actually in three pens and kind of forgot that I had put it in uh, so many pens, but um, I was trying to find the perfect pen uh, nib and such for this ink. Uh, and as you can see, this ink does look a bit different depending upon where you, uh, where you, come on, focus, I got a little too close, <laughs> depending upon what kind of nib you rock. Uh, so I've got it in a Kaveco Sports, this is a double broad nib, like it is, pretty big, pretty big temp tipping, and uh, you can see here it's kind of a, Kind of like a seafoam green. That's what this ends up looking like to me in a lot of these nibs. Uh, I also have it in this Aurora Talentum, which I'd totally forgotten I put it in here until I started looking at my ink books. Uh, this is a medium nib, but it's a very wet medium. In fact, this medium, I think, is wetter and bigger than this double broad. This is uh, this is uh, this has been tuned to be wet and kind of broad. So um, there's that. And then lastly, I had it in a very thin nib. This is a Franklin Christoph Model 03 Italian Ice with a fine SIG. Uh, and uh, I don't like it very much out of this nib. It's okay. You can see that's this line here. It's it's fine, but I don't love it. I think it's just kind of this ink is a little bit light. I think for that uh, for me, a lot of y'all are gonna like that because you like these um, like slightly undersaturated, dustier inks. But uh, I like mine a little bit. Uh, a little bit more saturated. So this one is, I mean, it's a cool ink and it's got this really interesting color. And as you'll see when we go through ink, um, uh, ink comparisons, and I've got a bunch of them, uh, this one is uh, very unusual. All right, this one is Bad Bad Leroy Brown and this one is my pick out of the two. Comes in this cool bottle. There's the, the brown wax at the top there. You've got a car. It's got the lyrics to the song Bad Bad Leroy Brown there. And also at the bottom it says a badass fountain pen ink. This is a pretty badass ink. Here's some of it that's spelled on the label when I was not careful. <laughs> so there you go. Bad, bad Leroy Brown. And this one is real cool. I really dig this one. And I've had it in this Kanalea Mauna Kea uh, pretty much since I got this ink, I think. It's, this is definitely, this is the only pen I've got it in. But I love it so much in this pen that I was like, 
I mean, I could put it in something else, but also kind of like why, right? I mean, it's super nice and it just, the flow on this is great. Uh, in fact, the flow on both of these is really nice. And it just sort of, it feels great on the page. It's a great brown ink, sort of a, sort of a warm brown. It's got more of those uh, sort of yellow tones than it does the cool tones. So browns can lean a bunch of different ways. It can lean a little bit green, a little bit blue, a little bit yellow. Uh, this one leans a little bit on the yellow side perhaps, but uh, uh, pretty, pretty nice. All right, uh, let's look at a bunch of color comparisons because I think that'll help you figure out um, well, heck, I mean, if you want to get one of these, you're just going to get it. But for some of us who aren't able to get it, uh, perhaps this will help you find a, uh, a decent replacement. Oh, but first, let's look at it on some copy paper because <laughs> I almost forgot about that. Uh, so here we have uh, this on some copy paper. This is my Staples office paper. I took some from the office. Don't tell anybody. Uh, it's got, uh, this is 30% recycled paper. Recycled paper is generally not super good against ink. Uh, and of course, this is like the cheapest stuff that you can get from Staples, right? So 20-pound uh, copy paper. This is a broad Yovo nib is what's in these uh, kind of layer pens or in, in this kind of layer pen. Um, and uh, it looks pretty good. I didn't have any real uh, feathering or any of that jazz. Down here, I got some like some spread and that sort of thing. But look, it is a double bra. Like, what do you want, you know? Uh, and then on the back, uh, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I got a couple little spots of bleed through, like very, very small spots. But again, cheapest possible crappy paper. Staples 30% recycled 20 pound paper. So, uh, does pretty good on this stuff. And in fact, I think all the Papier Plume inks are pretty darn good on uh, bad papers. They're just, um, they're solid inks, man. They make really nice inks. All water-based, mixed in-house, bottled, uh, French recipes, etc., etc. Here, it is on some Tomoe River. This, of course, is the uh, Bad Bad Leroy Brown right here from the Broad Nib. You can see it gets sort of a nutty flavor from this... Uh, from this uh, Tomoe River in an ink journal. Uh, so it doesn't really soak in much. This is a very nice paper, uh, especially if you're showing ink qualities, which is kind of like nutty brown. And then down here, I think actually this looks better on the Apica and on the, um, the copy paper than it does on Tomoe River because it doesn't soak in and it tends to be lighter and uh, dustier. And a lot of that, that dusty ink is really coming into style. Uh, it's not my jam, but a lot of people like it. So there you go. And then, in my currently inked Inky Fingers journal, which I hear you can actually still get, so check these out. Go find them on uh, Inky Fingers. Uh, I think, um, I'm not really sure, just Google it up. And here we have the fine SIG. I think it looks pretty nice on there. And here we have the Talentum. I actually didn't write one of these for the Double Broad, uh, but this is going to be relevantly similar to what you get from the Double Broad, which is um, you get sort of a, it looks bluer here than it does here. For whatever reason, this uh, fine SIG seems to concentrate it maybe, and so you get more of a green tone. This is one of those inks that will, whoa, completely go out of focus. <laughs> this is one of those ink that, inks that will sort of, come on now, that will change character depending upon uh, your nib and that sort of thing. And then here is, uh, where is it? It's right here somewhere. There we go. There's the Bad Bad Leroy Brown right there. And I think this looks gorgeous on kind of every paper. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> so get that Bad Bad Leroy Brown. All right, now let's take a look at some uh, some various ink samples and see what's, uh, what's what. So here it is on a Colodex card. This is Lake Michigan Winter. Um, here's another Papier Plume. This is the Lake Michigan Blue, uh, which probably is Lake Michigan Summer, and I just mislabeled it because I don't have a Lake Michigan Blue and they don't list one. So I think this is the older one and I just mislabeled it somehow. That that happens sometimes, uh, but close enough. And this, this has definitely got a greener cast than this one. The winter is darker, a little gloomier. Uh, then here we have uh, Papier Plume's Forest Green. So you can see what a real, like a solid green green looks like next to these uh, more tealy sorts of uh, tealy sorts of greens. Then we've got uh, Irishizuku, Irishizoku, Irishizuku. There we go. <laughs> Can't say words. This is uh, Ciro. I'm not gonna get that right. That will be connect corrected in the comments. Look below, uh, which I think is pretty nice, although darker than that one. Uh, also in the same kind of vein is the Diamine Schubert from the Music Collection, and this one it, it has a bunch of sheen and that sort of thing that you're not really gonna find here. You'll find shading, but no sheen uh, in this Papier Plume ink. There you go. Uh, we also have a pair of color verses. We've got here Photon, which is uh, to my eye quite a lot greener than Lake Michigan Winter. Uh, but it is in the same vein. And then Morning Star, which also is greener, I think, than uh, than the other. Uh, Morning Star, beautiful. Really like that one a lot. 
Robert Oster Marine is kind of in the same place as well, but also greener. Uh, and uh, here's another Ir Shizuku. Uh, this is Shinryoku, which is just a straight up springy sort of green instead of the like slightly gloomier winter and uh, you know darker marine. And then two last ones, which are not in the same area, but they're worth showing anyway, because maybe you've got them around. Diamine Soft Mint, which is a perennial favorite. This is a, a really nice sort of minty looking green. And over here, Roaring Klingner's Sketch Ink Clara, which is a really interesting ink that I haven't gotten a chance to use yet. But you can see uh, this is actually a pigment based ink. And so that's why it's super dark in the middle where it's sort of settled and dried. But, uh, you know, much, much greener, I think. So hopefully it'll give you the sort of color family where uh, Lake Michigan Winter lives. And then for browns, this is an interesting brown and one I didn't have a ton of that were like it. Um, this is Straits Pins Honest Inks Shitty Sepia. <laughs> Gotta love the uh, the naming convention on those, which is lighter and slightly, uh, slightly uh, well, lighter, but in the same color family, I think. And then here we have Platinum's Khaki Black, which is uh, pretty darn cool. Right there. Bit lighter, kind of in the same area as the shitty sepia, uh, but uh, this one is actually um, iron gall, of course. So kind of fun. Doesn't really change color much. A lot of those change color. That one's not really. Here is Noodler's uh, Dromgul's Chisholm Trail, which was exclusive. I'm sure it still is exclusive if they have it. This was from the Dallas Pin Show in 2017. So maybe not able to get your hands on that one. I didn't really care for this one that much anyway. Uh, let's see what else is close. Let's give it uh, Noodler's Polar Brown. Do a pair of Noodlers next to each other. And Polar Brown, I think, is definitely um, sort of... I don't know, it's sort of more sepia than Leroy Brown. You can definitely sort of see the, the yellower tones here when you compare the two. Then let's give it, uh, here we go, Pelican Edelstein Schmoky Quartz, which is, I think, fairly close. The Leroy Brown is maybe a little bit lighter, but I don't know. I think they're pretty darn close. And I really like Smoky Quartz a lot more than I thought I was going to, which is probably why I like Leroy Brown so much. Um, and then next to that, let's give it, uh, let's give it Yoshizuku's Sukushi. Horsetail, one of my favorite Yoshizukus, uh, but it's a bit lighter than Leroy Brown. Leroy Brown comes... Pardon me, hiccups. Comes down a little bit darker. And then something completely different. This is Monteverde's Brown Sugar, which is one of my favorite uh, brown inks. Uh, and I love the Monteverde inks a lot. This one's got definitely a redder cast, and you get some like green sheen around the edges. It's just sort of overall darker, but uh, I'm saying it's worth seeing because it shows you like the differences in browns. And then here's one of my uh, my absolute favorite sailors, Ricky Cha, which leans green, uh, and you can definitely see some like greenish stuff around the edges here. It gets a little bit more light on the subject there. So it's not really in the same color area. And then one that's pretty darn close, and I like a lot, is uh, Ji Herban's Lita Te, which is sort of like like dark tea, and it's pretty close. This one is more is darker and maybe less shady, I think, than uh, Bad Bad Leroy Brown. But uh, anyway, if you can't get your hands on this one, there are some good brown options. And don't shy away from brown inks, because they kind of rule. All right, uh, that's it. This has been the Papier Plume selections for the Chicago Pin Show in 2019. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, check out my uh, Instagram, at Ink Dependence. Send me uh, emails at mike at inkdependence.com. Check out my store and all that sort of thing linked below for merches and whatnot. Thanks again to Papier Plume for letting me have these inks for review. And uh, if you're in Chicago, come find me. I'll be uh, either wandering around uh, or I'll be, uh, I'll be at the Anderson Pins table doing some work for them. So come see me. Come say hi. And uh, until later, peace out.